Does your art suck? Do you feel like your wheels are just spinning and you're really not going anywhere with it? Do you just feel like giving up? What's up y'all, this is The Art Mentor. My name is Sean, welcome back. I'm a veteran art teacher and freelance artist. And today we're gonna examine this simple existential question that all artists should ask themselves, which is why does my art look bad? Let me just reassure you, this is a perfectly natural quandary that all artists have. Now it's gonna be different about this video versus a lot of other videos that I've researched for this topic today is that I've taught thousands of students, literally thousands of students. So that gives me access to a lot of perspectives that most people just don't have access to. This is gonna be straight, honest feedback as far as how you can improve your artwork. And while I'm talking to you about this, please enjoy my speed paint and it's gonna start right now. Now, the first reason that you might be thinking your artwork looks bad is because you might be hung up on what I call the talent complex. Now, let me just reassure you right now, talent is not real. And this is not just my opinion, it's really been disproven by psychologists. I've done entire videos on this. I'll go ahead and link them down below. But yes, talent is not real. It is not something that actually exists. It's just an opinion. So I hope that doesn't hurt your opinion of yourself because it really shouldn't, because it's actually a really awesome, empowering thing. Because what this basically says now is that anyone can become exceptional at their artwork because it is a craft, it is a skill. It's no different than a plumber or a carpenter or a bricklayer. It's all the same. So we need to view art making as a skill. Again, if you're thinking of the uber talented, the ultra elite of the art world, the people that you follow on Instagram that have millions of followers, you can be like that too, or you can come close to it if you really dedicate yourself to it. Overall, the whole concept of talent really does a lot more damage than good because what it does is it sets up roadblocks and excuses for why people think that they cannot achieve what they want to in their art. And especially one awful thing that it does is that it forces an unfair comparison because what it forces you and a lot of other artists to do perhaps is that it makes you look at other people either physically in a classroom with you or online and you think that you can't achieve that level. But here's the thing, you can, anybody can, literally anybody can because talent isn't real because art is a skill. It is not a God-given gift. Now, of course, you can't develop the skill unless you do this. The second reason that your artwork might look bad in your eyes is because of practice. Now, of course, we've all heard the expression, right? Practice makes what again? Practice makes perfect, right? No, it doesn't. Practice cannot make perfect because perfect is an illusion. If you're constantly seeking to attain perfection, you're literally setting yourself up for exhaustion and failure. What practice actually brings is progress, and that's what you need to seek. You can attain progress, you can seek that your entire lifetime, and it's actually an achievable goal. And on the topic of practice and what we get out of it, here's what I wanna ask you. How are you practicing? What are you practicing? But also, what aren't you practicing? This is a key essential question to ask yourself. What are you avoiding? Now, practice only helps you when you're being challenged. So I wanna encourage you to take risk. You have to step outside of your comfort zone constantly in order to really stress your artistic muscles so that they'll grow and then you can achieve some type of significant development in your artistic skill. Another thing that I've seen happen a lot is that if you're constantly practicing poor techniques or if you're not really trying to push yourself, then it is extremely likely that you're ever going to see any type of significant development in your artistic abilities. Now, poor practice also leads to this. The third reason that your artwork might look bad is because you're stuck in a state of perpetual inferiority. This means that you're stuck in a perpetual state of producing poor, low quality artwork that you're not proud of. And the root cause of this is because you just keep practicing the same poor techniques, the same inefficient methods that aren't leading you towards progress. Now, another reason that you might be stuck in this perpetual inferiority complex is because you're just constantly executing the same thing. Now, this is seriously gonna go against the grain in everything that you've heard, but literally, if you are only starting out and you're trying to specialize immediately, it's a really bad focus. In order for you to really excel in art, you need to be capable in a lot of different areas. You need to be capable at not only characters and backgrounds and props and clothing and folds and anatomy. If you are only focused on one thing, like you're only trying to make anime characters right at the beginning of your artistic life, then you're definitely 
eventually you're gonna burn out because you're gonna be constantly only practicing that one thing and you're gonna lose out on all of the fundamentals that go into that thing that are super important for it. But let's liken this to fitness for a minute, okay? So if you only stress one muscle group, like if you only did biceps for the next 10 years, what would your physique look like? Probably a little weird, right? Well, art works the same way. You have to stress your art muscles in order for them to grow, in order for them to develop, you have to challenge them. So if you're only doing one thing, again, liken that to if you only did bicep curls for 10 years, what would your artistic skills look like? Now it's gonna be really hard to challenge yourself unless you also have access to this. Hey y'all, how am I doing so far? Hey, if you enjoy this, please help my channel continue to grow organically by hitting that like button, subscribe, and the notification bell so that you know every single time I push out content like this. Now, let's get back into it. You need to have access to some type of art education. And look, y'all, I'm not talking about university level stuff. I don't want you to go into thousands of dollars of debt just because you wanna get better. I'm not promoting that at all. And I never have, by the way, even though I'm a teacher. So what I am saying though, is that you need to be constantly seeking out new methods, exposure to techniques, exposure to new artists. You need to be looking at better ways of efficiently managing your time and your resources. You need to have access to skills and techniques that are going to help you improve. What I see as an issue for many artists is that they constantly just look inward for how to improve the artwork. And look, there's a danger in this, y'all, because if you're only looking inward to try and find all of your answers, it is highly unlikely that you're ever going to unearth your potential. And on this topic, y'all, stop making excuses for time or lack thereof with this, okay? Because you have access nowadays to so many amazing resources, okay? You can find forums. You can, There are entire websites for this. You can find a Facebook group. There are a plethora of amazing resources. You're here on YouTube watching me right now. Hopefully you find my content helpful and enlightening for this aspect too. So you have access to tons of free resources or small fees associated to learn about this. You can go on Skillshare, you can take online classes for this. Or of course, yeah, you could go the traditional route and go to art school or enroll in a class at, at your local high school if you're a kid watching this too. You know, all of this is awesome. Although, even if you take my advice here, none of this is gonna matter if you have these you might have really poor art habits. Now, let's better label this as well as two things, time management and managing distractions. These are two areas that really plague a lot of artists and particularly young artists from achieving the success and the level of success that they want. So what do your average habits look like? What are you doing while you're producing art? Are you focused? Are you concentrated? Are you looking at your phone the whole time? Are you watching TV? Are you in a room with somebody else that's very distracting? Are you constantly being bombarded with questions? Is somebody always interrupting you? All of these distractions and all these things that people do when they try to make artwork distract them from focusing on what they need to do. And this takes you in and out of a flow state. And if you've never heard of flow state before, that's when you're like in the zone. So it takes you on average about 20 minutes for the average person to jump in and out of that. So again, you need 20 minutes of hard concentration to really enter that state where you really just feel awesome and good about your art making. And if you're constantly looking at your notifications on your phones, or if you take a break for a second, you watch TV, you're breaking that. And especially what I recommend that you do to avoid any type of excuses for not making your artwork or concentrating is this, you need to prime yourself for success. This is what I have been doing for years and I'm gonna recommend that you do it too. So remove all barriers and excuses. So for example, when I make art, I typically do it at night. And what I'll do is I'll set up my computer, I'll turn it on, I'll let that thing warm up, I'll turn on Photoshop, I'll plug in my tablet. If I'm gonna be sculpting something, I'll have all my tools and everything out and ready. Hey, before I even shot this YouTube video right now, I had my entire lighting set up the day before so that I wouldn't have an excuse as to why I couldn't do it or why I couldn't do it to the level of before I started shooting this right now. So priming yourself for success is a way of removing all the barriers and obstacles in order for you to achieve the maximum impact of what you're capable of doing. All of this revolves around the simple topic of being unfocused, because if you're unfocused, that means that you are stunting your growth and your overall development. Now, all of this leads to this topic, which you might be having too. You also might be having commitment issues to your artwork. So I wanna ask you, how badly do you want this? 
How badly do you want to improve? What does it mean to you? How often are you making art? How frequently? Poor habits, bad practice, and a lack of discipline will keep you feeling completely plateaued in your artwork. I don't want that for you. So just be honest with yourself right now. Be really critically honest, right? Are you really making the most of your time? Are you wasting any time? If I followed you around for an entire week, how many hours would I see you doing things like scrolling through Instagram, wasting time watching Netflix, watching TV shows, playing video games, saying that you're doing research when you're really just playing God of War or something like that? So how often do you waste time when you could be investing that time into your artwork? In order to really surpass this obstacle, what I'm gonna recommend is this, is to think of yourself in five years from right now. Where are you and how grateful are you that you put in all this time and you invested this amount of effort into growing your art skills, right? Being more future-minded will lead you to better success and it will lead you to feeling pumped and excited about making your artwork every single time. It will energize you and make you feel great about your process as well. And sadly, if you struggle with commitment, it could definitely be rooted in this. Your issue might also be that you just have low standards. And listen, I'm not trying to insult you, but this is a rough thing for a lot of people to admit on this, okay? And holistically speaking here, having low standards in your art is an art killer. This unfortunately impacts all aspects of both your process and your product. So to combat this, what you need to do is first and foremost, Believe that you can create really awesome, high quality art. And to do that, what I recommend that you do is you really need to surround yourself with inspiration. So for example, print out a bunch of pictures that you have, put them up all over your wall, change your desktop background, change your phone background, have access to all this stuff. Think about who your influence is, really study and examine them so that you can start to emulate them and you can be great. If you really emulate people to a certain degree, then you're going to definitely have a big boom in your abilities. So this will effectively help you raise your standards. One of the major things too you also have to do is you have to stop listening to naysayers and negativity. Yeah, unfortunately it sucks being an artist that a lot of people are just honestly just not gonna believe in you. And that really sucks about the entire process in being an artist. But listen y'all, there are just as many people that wanna pump you up and make you feel great about your artwork. And a lot of great tutors and YouTube channels that you can find out there who are gonna help nurture your creativity. So listen to them, don't focus on the negativity. Now, subpar standards typically also lead to this common issue. You might be quitting too early on your art. And listen, y'all, this is definitely the most common reason that I have seen in all of my years of teaching art and in making art too. Because what I typically think all the time is when I look at an artwork and I see a student or I see another artist that just feels really dissatisfied with their product is I just say to myself, look, if they just spent like another hour or two on this, they would probably feel a lot better about this. In fact, you would see a colossal improvement on it. A common saboteur leading towards this quitting too early scenario is when people start to say, oh, I like it like that. But listen, y'all, whenever you say the phrase, oh, I like it like that, that typically is actually you saying that I'm okay with the mediocrity of it and I'm okay with the current state of it, even though it doesn't meet my standards. And that's a really rough thing for people to start to dismiss. So listen, the next time that you ever start to say to yourself, oh, I like it like that, instead of feeling like you don't wanna challenge yourself, I wanna encourage you to actually do that. I encourage you to do this. Take a break from it, come back to it the next day, and put another hour or two into that artwork. And I think that if you have that break from it and you can maybe look at it on your phone or you can take a quick look at it and then go about your day, come back to it, and you sit down for another hour or two, man, you will feel so much better about it. You will actually see more improvement with it knowing that you didn't just give up and throw it away. You really have to battle your content in order to raise your bar a lot higher. And then you'll realize this happens. Eventually, depending on how long you've been making your work, you're going to have a perception gap. Basically, your vision evolves at a higher rate than your skill does. But listen, that's not a bad thing, it's a good thing because that means that you've effectively raised your standards at this point. And if you've raised your standards, then you can see things that you used to not see. And this now allows you to strategically target things that you were not focused on before. When you feel this way, what I encourage you to do is actually to take a step back, look at your small achievements, and see where you have come from. And don't compare yourself 
to really big artists that you look up to and admire. You need to see artists as icebergs, okay? So you're seeing their achievements and their current ability levels as just like the little peak of it. But what you're not seeing is this colossal mass underneath the water. That's all the time and practice they put into it. You can also think of it like your ability is like a grain of sand and you have a pile and they have a desert. And again, you're not fairly comparing the two scenarios because even like if you compare yourself to someone like me versus my students, like they've been doing art for maybe a year, two years, three years, five years, I've been doing it for 30. So it's unfair to compare yourself versus another artist and you don't know what they've gone through or how much struggle or how much practice and time and effort that they put into it. You need to acknowledge where you are right now and understand that with time and with practice and good practice, especially in good habits, you are going to evolve your skills and you're gonna raise your bar up really high. Now to help bridge this gap as well, you're gonna to need to do this. You need to seek critique, okay? And this is a really hard topic for a lot of artists because it involves exposing yourself, putting yourself out there. And literally, you're airing all your dirty laundry in your artwork and saying, this is what I did with all the mistakes. And you run the risk of, yeah, you might get a harsh critique every once in a while. And if you wanna learn how to handle that, I made a video about it, I'll link it down below for you. There's a lot of people that don't appreciate or understand art or the art hustle. And you need to find that group. So you can do things like find Facebook groups, you can go into forums, you can find Discord servers. There's just a lot of great places on the internet, or you might even be able to find some really awesome friends at art school or in a class that you take locally. So you can find people both virtually and in person to help support and nurture your development because you really need that support system. I really need to stress that. If you don't have a great support system in place, then you're just gonna feel discouraged all the time. Another thing about this too, is that aside from the supportive community aspect, you need people to tell you what you're doing wrong. You need feedback because if you're constantly only looking at yourself and for example, you're only getting affirmations from likes and subscribers or followers or on whatever social media platform, this is not real, it's vain, it's inauthentic. You need people to tell you how you can improve, what you're doing wrong and how to fix it, okay? So again, go back to your art education and your resources and your tutorials that you're watching for this too, because all of this will allow you to become better and strengthen your skills and strengthen your determination, your commitment to this craft so that you can be awesome. And hey, if you wanna go ahead and continue your artistic development, grow and get better, make sure you watch these videos.